Book 10 The Book of the Double Twilight Canto 4 The Dream Twilight of the Earthly Real In her glorious kingdom of eternal light All ruler ruled by none the truth supreme, omnipotent, omniscient, and alone in a golden country keeps her measureless house. In its corridor she hears the tread that comes out of the unmanifest, never to return till the unknown is known and seen by men. Above the stretch and blaze of cosmic sight, above the silence of the wordless thought, formless creator of immortal forms, nameless, Investitured with the name divine, Transcending time's hours, Transcending timelessness. The mighty mother sits in lucent calm And holds the eternal child upon her knees, Attending the day when he shall speak to fate. There is the image of our future's hope. There is the sun for which all darkness waits. There is the imperishable harmony. The world's contradictions climb to her and are one, there is the truth of which the world's truths are shreds, the light of which the world's ignorance is the shade, till truth draws back the shade that it has cast. The love our hearts call down to heal all strife, the bliss for which the world's derelict sorrows yearn. Thence comes the glory sometimes seen on earth, the visits of Godhead to the human soul, the beauty and the dream on nature's face. There, the perfection born from eternity calls to it the perfection born in time, the truth of God surprising human life, the image of God overtaking finite shapes. There, in a world of everlasting life, in the realms of the immortal supermind, Truth, who hides here her head in mystery, Her riddle deemed by reason impossible In the stark structure of material form, Unenigmed lives, unmasked her face, and there is nature and the common law of things. There, in a body made of spirit stuff, the hearthstone of the ever-living fire, action translates the movements of the soul. Thought steps infallible and absolute, and life, is a continual worship's rite, a sacrifice of rapture to the One. 
a cosmic vision, a spiritual sense, feels all the infinite lodged in finite form and seen through a quivering ecstasy of light, discovers the bright face of the bodiless. In the truth of a moment, in the moment soul can sip the honey wine of eternity. A spirit who is no one, and innumerable, the one mystic, infinite person of his world multiplies his myriad personality on all his bodies, seals his divinity's stamp and sits in each immortal and unique. The immobile stands behind each daily act, a background of the movement and the scene, upholding creation on its might and calm, and change on the immutable's deathless poise. The timeless looks out from the travelling hours. The ineffable puts on a robe of speech where all its words are woven like magic threads, moving with beauty, inspiring with their gleam, and every thought takes up its destined place, recorded in the memory of the world. The truth supreme, vast and impersonal, fits faultlessly the hour and circumstance. Its substance, a pure gold, ever the same, but shaped into vessels for the spirit's use. Its gold becomes the wine jar and the vase. All there is a supreme epiphany. The all-wonderful makes a marvel of each event. The all-beautiful is a miracle in each shape. The all-blissful smites with rapture the heart's throbs. A pure celestial joy is the use of sense. Each being there is a member of the self, a portion of the million-thoughted all a claimant to the timeless unity, the many's sweetness, the joy of difference, edged with the intimacy of the one. But who can show to thee truth's glorious face? Our human words can only shadow her. To thought, she is an unthinkable rapture of light. To speech, a marvel inexpressible. O oh, death, if thou couldst touch the truth supreme, thou wouldst grow suddenly wise and cease to be. If our souls could see and love and clasp God's truth, its infinite radiance would seize our hearts, our being in God's image be remade, and earthly life become the life divine.
Then death, the last time, answered Savitri. If truth supreme transcends her shadow here, severed by knowledge and the climbing vasts, what bridge can cross the gulf that she has left between her and the dream world she has made, or who could hope to bring her down to men and persuade to tread the harsh globe with wounded feet, leaving her unapproachable glory and bliss, wasting her splendor on pale earthly air. Is thine that strength, O beauty of mortal limbs, O soul who flutterest to escape my net? Who then art thou, hiding in human guise? Thy voice carries the sound of infinity. Knowledge is with thee. Truth speaks through thy words. The light of things beyond shines in thy eyes. But where is thy strength to conquer time and death? Hast thou God's force to build heaven's values here? For truth and knowledge are an idle gleam if knowledge brings not power to change the world. If might comes not to give to truth her right, a blind force, not truth, has made this ignorant world. A blind force, not truth, orders the lives of men. By power, not light, the great gods rule the world. Power is the arm of God, the seal of fate. O human claimant to immortality, reveal thy power, lay bare thy spirit's force. Then will I give back to thee, Satyavan, or if the mighty mother is with thee, Show me her face, that I may worship her. Let deathless eyes look into the eyes of death, an imperishable force touching brute things, transform earth's death into immortal life. Then can thy dead return to thee and live. The prostrate earth perhaps shall lift her gaze and feel near her the secret body of God and love and joy overtake fleeing time.